Greetings and salutations, everyone. This time on the channel, it's the Texas Leica, otherwise known as the Fuji GW690. This camera debuted in Japan in 1978 at a cost of 143,500 yen, or approximately $1,750 in today's money. Some say it looks like what happens when you put a black Leica M3 in an enlarger, but so it doesn't have the ability to change lenses, I think it's more akin to a Texas Yashica. That's right, the Yashica Electro 35. There's a rangefinder camera with a fixed focal length lens and, you know, more approximates the look of the GW690. Working examples of the GW690 will set you back anywhere from $400 to $800 on eBay today, with the GSW690 variant costing up to $1,000 for an excellent copy. So is it worth it? If you want to use it for its intended purpose, photographing large groups of people, tour groups for example, then you could probably get by with a more feature-rich digital camera for a lot less. But if you're into street photography or urban landscape photography that has a standout look, then the GW690 or GSW690 could just be the thing. That is, if you can get past the weight, the bulk, and the limited number of images per roll of film, then the results will speak for themselves. At three pounds, three ounces with a roll of film, my first gen, which by the way is the lightest, is almost a full pound heavier than my Lumex S5 Mark II with a 50 millimeter lens. A comparison involving a medium format film camera would be setting it against my Bronica S2, which weighs in at a beefy four pounds, 13 ounces. So all in all, the weight really isn't an issue. As for bulk, I find the ergonomics of the camera make up for the bulkiness. At this point in my life, my hands are a combination of hockey pucks for palms and fingers made of articulated sausages, and even I find that this camera feels like any other camera in my hands. The simple, well thought out design means that you just forget that it's about twice the size of a 35mm rangefinder. Some folks might be put off by the only 8 pictures per roll of film, which makes each image cost about $3 by the time the film is developed. More if you have the processing lab scan the images also. Why so few images per roll? Well, the 690 in the model name references the size of the image on the negative. This camera takes an image that is six centimeters by nine centimeters for a three to two aspect ratio. Pedants will point out that the image size is not exactly six by nine centimeters. And I say, good day to you, sir. You can go watch the Tim Traveler. His pedant corner caters to your exacting needs. The size of the image on the negative means that only eight will fit on a roll of 120 film. If you can find 220 film, you can get 16 images on a roll. And at one time, Fuji made a short 120 roll that only provided for four pictures per roll. And that short roll really drives home the intended use case. It allowed tour operators to take a quick set of pictures of the tour group at the start of the day, get the roll developed, and then have prints ready for ordering by participants at the end of the day. It seems that many thousands of pictures were taken this way. If you want more images on a roll of 120 medium format film from a rangefinder, then something that produces six by 4.5 centimeter negatives is your best bet because you can get 15 shots per roll. Your option then would be a Bronica RF 645. Working examples of those go from anywhere between $1,500 and $2,000, which puts the price of this camera into perspective. Personally, I find that knowing I have fewer shots to work with helps me to better select my shots for the stories they tell. But then again, your mileage may vary. Contrary to its chonky nature and having the word professional emblazoned right on the front, the GW690 is a very easy to use. All of the exposure controls are on the lens and the rest works as you would expect of any film camera. This camera does not have an exposure meter, which means that you will need to provide your own. I guess you could use the Sunny 16 rule, and if you can, then more power to you. Myself, I use a meter. Specifically, I use the TT Artisan light meter. Insert it into accessory shoe, and you're set to go. So once you have your exposure, you set the shutter speed using the first ring on the lens. The shutter speed ring has a tab on it, on the bottom, which allows for the quick adjustment using only the index finger. I believe the intention was to um, allow you to set the aperture and then just change the shutter speed to suit. So basically think of it as a manual aperture priority mode. The next ring back is the aperture setting ring and then you have the options from F35 all the way through to F32. 
And generally for street photography, I set it to either you know f8 or f11, and then adjust the shutter speed accordingly. And remember that neither neither the shutter speed or aperture ring support half increments, and that's just kind of something to keep in mind as you're you know doing your deal. So once you have your exposure set, focus the lens by looking into the viewfinder and turning the focus ring on the lens. It's easy to turn as it has a 90 degree focus throw, meaning that you only need to turn the ring one quarter turn to go from the nearest focus distance of one meter to infinity. And yes, like uh, most rangefinders, close focus isn't really all that close. This camera is not good for macro photography. If you made it this far into the video, hoping to hear a review of this camera's macro capabilities, I mean, I'm kind of sorry to disappoint you because they don't exist. So once you have taken a picture, you wind the film advance lever twice to get ready for the next shot. Uh, one of the weird complaints about this camera, and one I haven't really noticed, is that some folks think the, the shutter mechanism is extremely loud. This noise has been attributed to a counter on the bottom of the camera. The counter increments once for every 10 pictures taken with the camera. Conveniently, once for every standard roll of film. Assuming that no one has tampered with the counter and only standard 120 rolls have been shot on the camera, you can get an idea of how many rolls of film have gone through the camera. My example is on 0016, 160 pictures or 16 rolls of film. I know the counter works as it was on 014 when I got it and I've used it to take two rolls of pictures. Of course, the counter could have rolled over, but it is generally easy to tell when a camera has had a thousand rolls of film through it. You know, and this particular camera has not had a thousand rolls of film through it. You know, the biggest issue with this specific camera is that the rubber on the viewfinder has deformed, you know, because, well, it would do, wouldn't it? Earlier in the video, I check off gunned the GL690. And here is where I would normally pay off on that promise. But I can't because I couldn't get a GL690 in time. The major difference between the two cameras, however, is that the GL690 has interchangeable lenses and weighs about one pound more than the GW690. The two cameras seem to cost about the same, but the examples of the GL690 for sale are generally not in as good a shape as the examples of the GW690. For my money, the GW690 is the one to have. It's rugged, simple to use, and produces honking big negatives that look great. I have several of the Yashica Rangefinder 35mm cameras and a Leica 3F, which I love, but the more I use the GW690, the more I like it and the more I am going to use it. So if you're interested, follow me over at the website where I post scans of most of my pictures. And if you made it this far, well, feed the machine and be on the lookout for my next video where I take on Smirsh, armed with only a tiny camera and a terrible British accent. Thanks again and later days, everybody.